GTI with the distinctive alloy wheels known as P-Slot from Pirelli. The GTI was unveiled to the general public and the media at the September 1975 Frankfurt Motor Show. However, it wasn't available for purchase until June 1976 due to engineers insisting that the new GTI meet the same standards of quality and dependability as all VW production vehicles. This commitment almost certainly contributed to the GTI's longevity in comparison to rivals like the XR3, Astra GTE, and Peugeot 205 GTI. Accessible in any tone insofar as it was Mars red or precious stone metallic silver, clients were offered the decision of Schwartz Dark not long after send-off. At the London Motor Show in late 1976, VW announced that there would be no RHD version of the GTI. However, you could import a LHD one as a special order for £3,372 if you so desired. This was the first time the GTI was sold in the UK. GTI Engineering and Tim Styles were two businesses in the UK that were beginning to specialize in producing their own GTIs from RHD 1,500 cubic centimeters golfs. VW finally offered a RHD version of the GTI in early 1979 after relentless lobbying from the UK dealer network. This is something they probably should have done earlier, especially when sales of the 1978 LHD GTI were 22 compared to the 1979 RHD GTI, which sold over 1,500 units. The face that began the frenzy. The MK1 Golf's unmistakable red striped grille. The 1979 MK1 GTI included the recent fad plastic wraparound guards, which had supplanted the essential metal rail type undertakings which the previous vehicles had been fitted with. The Series 2 dashboard was introduced in September 1980 with LED warning lights, new dials, a digital clock, and additional air vents. The interior trim changed from the Czech design to a more contemporary striped pattern, and the GTI received a new close-ratio 5-speed gearbox in January 1980. The larger rear clusters, various door poles, and larger door pockets were added a year later. The GTI's first major engine change occurred in September 1982, when the capacity was increased from 1,588 cubic centimeters to 1,781 cubic centimeters. Although this had no effect on overall power, it did improve 0 to 60 times and slightly increase top speed. Inside-wise, the MFA we've all generally expected in GTIs was presented. Basically an onboard PC which could quantify efficiency, distance, fuel range, motor temperatures and outer temperatures, it was really exceptional for 1982. Details the interior of the MK1 Golf GTI left features the golf ball gear knob. Pirelli P-slot alloy wheels right for the MK1 Golf. In layman's terms, the car was a MK1 GTI with all the option boxes checked, including Pirelli Edition in Europe, Campaign Edition cars, which VW marked as the final year of production for the MK1 GTI. The car was essentially a rather cynical marketing job by VW to shift the remaining MK1 GTIs. Before the introduction of the MK2, these automobiles, which feature a sunroof, 14-inch Pirelli alloys, a four-headlamp grille, tinted glass, metallic paint, and a leather-trimmed grille, are now regarded as highly desirable by MK1 GTI enthusiasts. Sent off in 1975 the U.S., the hair, as it was known around there 
was quick turning into an awe-inspiring phenomenon and was actually the main vehicle equipped for carrying the battle to the flood of new Japanese minimal vehicles, while the general look of the vehicle was genuinely like its European market kin, there were contrasts, with influence guards adding both outwardly and in a real sense a couple of pounds to the little bunny's waistline, as well as expanding the load by a couple of kilos. The cars sold in the United States were still made on the same production line as the models sold in Europe, but this was going to change in a few years. For the beginning of the 1979 model year creation of the Bunny was moved toward the Westmoreland plant in Pennsylvania. The plant had previously been a Chrysler creation office, with VW involving the shell as a beginning stage. The opening of VW's first major manufacturing facility in the United States by a non-domestic mark was historic as well. As a result, Toyota, Honda, BMW, and Mercedes were able to establish their own manufacturing operations in the United States. With a completely new front-end design, new square headlamps, and different grills, the new models were easy to tell apart from their European counterparts. As we have come to expect from USDM vehicles, the suspension was softened for the U.S. market. Wolfsburg and Westmoreland shared production at first, with the two models easily distinguishable by their distinct front ends. However, within a short time, all petrol-powered rabbits were manufactured in the United States, with only diesel vehicles imported. The diminutive Volkswagen received another facelift in 1981. The front wings were changed to include a wraparound indicators, and the bumpers were made of even more chunky plastic to reflect the most recent changes in the U.S. government's ongoing efforts to improve passenger safety. The first GTI arrived in the United States in 1983, nearly 10 years after its European debut. Even though the new Rabbit GTI was slower than its Euro counterpart, it still provided a significant performance boost over the stock Rabbit and was destined to be a huge hit. As the factory prepared to produce the brand new Golf MK.2, 1984 marked the end of production of the Rabbit. <laughs> Oh, my God.